Celebrating over 10 years of television ministry, Faith Worship Believers Church with Bishop Clyde Sellers. Faith Worship Believers Church is on the air. Coming up today on Faith Worship Believers Church with Bishop Clyde Stellars. Through Abraham, through the covenant joint heirs with Jesus. Look at somebody and say, I got Jesus, I got Abraham, and I got God. That means I'm a son. BB&T, American Bank, all those Wells Fargo's, they belong to us. And see, if I had some believing people, you, you'd be on your feet right now because you realize, guess what? Just because you go there and they limit you to what you can get out don't mean you're limited to what you can have. The earth is the Lord and the fullness down. Everything on the earth that God owns, he owns me, he owns the house, he owns the car, he owns the soul. Would you turn with me to 1 John the third chapter, verses 1 through verse 3. And Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 14. Um, it was my plan, and I know the youth are back in the class. It was my plan this week to go to the parade with them tomorrow, some of them. And I know that's a job now if I say it, because I have to keep them all on the chain. <laughs> But go out and support it and thank God for Martin Luther King. Amen. Amen. God using him and using Abraham Lincoln. Amen. Because I seen a movie on this morning. I want to see that movie about Abraham Lincoln. Y'all see it? It looks like it's a good movie. Now, some of y'all saying y'all don't watch movies, but uh, yes, you do. What's that? Life Channel? Like, yeah, yeah, you watching. That, that's a pre programmed in your TV. Now, y'all trying to act like y'all don't watch TV. Would y'all stand with me? I'm going to read this. And y'all, I'll tell you, if y'all just say amen, we better go home in just a little while. First John, the third chapter, verses 1 through verse 3. And it reads thusly. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we shall know that when we when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And let every man that have this hope in him purify himself even as he is pure. Romans 8 and 14 says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Can I just use two words this morning and kind of let y'all be on y'all way home? The sons of. Did y'all hear that? The sons of. Two words. The sons of. Father, we thank and praise you again for this word, this particular time. I thank and praise you for every family under the sound of my voice. And everybody that will hear this message that has been inspired by the Holy Ghost. That God, that we understand and identify with who we are. Lord, we're so grateful that your son, Jesus the Christ, died on the cross for our sins. And now because of that, we have this hope which is the hope of glory in Christ. 
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's amazing that we have been called a lot of names. And when it comes to a name as a son, that means you represent somebody or somebody as a father. Now, I have children and I have spiritual children. And I would hope to say even my spiritual children look a little bit like me. Now, now we know um, sometimes uh, gentlemen that when we see these young kids, they got the different hairstyles now. now. See, I like the low and the smooth cut because it's easy to manage. Uh, I mean, I don't have to sit under a dryer. I don't have to, you know, toy with it. All I do is get up and just brush it. But I could have a son that could, could want a different hairstyle, but he ought to still look a little bit like me. He ought to have some attributes like he's some kin to me or I got some DNA in him. Men, look at your sons over here and say, I got some DNA in you. So when you are a son, you have to represent your father. Jesus never did anything on the earth that didn't please his father. And a lot of times we see a lot of sons out of character. Because when you start getting hit with warfare, it's going to really show what kind of father you had, what kind of training you had, what kind of nurturing did you have. I'm trying to teach these young kids now, even my son, can you survive on the land without the grocery store? Can you survive without a job? Come on now. I want to teach people that even in son and father relationship, there must be, first of all, a connection. See, one thing I'm persuaded about is I'm standing right here. God is a provider for me. I'm not going to go without. I'm not going to go lacking. I believe that confession. There's no lack in my life. Because even if I'm not eating food, I got something spiritual to eat on. Amen. I got the word of God. See, I feel a breakthrough in here for somebody. I feel somebody done got out of sonship. See, when you get out of sonship, it ain't going to be no funship. The first thing we must understand is we must acknowledge that there are one Father. Matthew 23, verse 11 says, And call no man your father upon the earth, for there is one your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for there is one master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among ye shall be your shall be your servant. If you want to be great in the house of God, learn to serve somebody in the house of God. Amen. It's not about your title. It's not about your protocol. Learn to help somebody along life's journey. Right. Did you give somebody a cold glass of water in the name of Jesus? Have you served somebody? Oh, yeah, that's the question. Have you served somebody lately? Have you did anything honorable lately? He's saying if you want to honor the Father, you ought to be doing something that looks like the Father. But if it's all about you every time I see you or every time I hear you, you just ain't honoring your Father, which is in... I'm going to preach this because I've been called a lot of sons. And son of, some of them wasn't the son of God. Some of them wasn't the son in the kingdom. But see, I'm a son of the most high God. I'm a son of the most living God. I'm a son of the healer. I'm a son of the redeemer. I'm the son of the protector. I'm the son of the provider. I'm the son of the, he's a shield. He's my right hand. Some people say he's your co-pilot. He's my pal. When I get off the track, he lines me right up. When I get out of the way, he pushes me in the way. I'm a son of. Look at somebody and say, you may call me anything you want, but I'm a son of. 
I'm so glad to know this morning that when God woke us up, he called you his son. His child. Well, in the Bible, if you read, there was two brothers that was called sons of thunder. And I just feel like talking to come say sons of thunder. These two particular sons, James and John, decided the people wouldn't receive the word that came from Jesus. And they went back and they said, hey man, just, just burn the whole, send down, just send down fire from heaven and burn the whole city up. Uh -huh. Jesus said, I didn't come to do that. I came to seek and save those which were lost. Yeah. And sometimes when people don't want to hear us, y'all, and I want to talk to y'all real personal on this thing, when people don't want to hear us, sometimes we want to just beat them up. Uh -huh. You're already going through enough. Come on, y'all, you're struggling, you're battling, you're paying your time, you're with the church, you're struggling, and they don't want to hear about your God, and there is so much sin, they're on their way down. Jesus. And you're looking at them and say, you look like Gumby. Jesus. Then, on the other hand, there were some sons, the sons of Korah. Uh -huh. Three Israelites that rebelled against Moses' ministry. And people tell you in the church now, how can I be obedient to God? He sends you leaders. They ain't God, but God speaks to them. And if you don't hear them, you're rebelling against Oh, I wish y'all would get happy right there because guess what? That's the reason why the church is like it is right now. There's a whole lot of people that don't talk about their leaders. There's a whole lot of people walk around here, don't like their leaders. Well, get out! I can't roll out the red carpet for you, baby. Go somewhere you can hear your leader. Because it would be dangerous to sit up in the church and hear your leader preach every Sunday. And guess what? You don't hear nothing. And you end up before God one day and God said, I don't know you, depart. You workers of a neck. Well, I was in church. I laid hands. I gave to the poor. But guess what? You rebelled against leadership. The Bible said the earth opened up and swallowed them. How many people did they lead out? How many people did they tell, oh, Bishop ain't doing this. First lady ain't doing this. The Bible said the earth opened up and swallowed. Let me say this. Sin has an appetite. I made up my mind this morning. And every day, God, I'm going to tell your people what you said. I'm going to stand on it. Ain't no games about this thing. I ain't compromising with nobody. Guess what? It is what it is, baby. <laughs> That's the street saying, but guess what? It is what it is. You better call aces, aces, and spades, spades. And guess what? Number 16 and 13, guess what they said? Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether prince over us? Mm -hmm. Guess what they were saying? We don't want nobody to tell us what to do. Jesus. Even if it's God, we don't want nobody to tell us what to do. And there's people like that right now in the church. Amen. You don't need to tell me what to do, Bishop. My God. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. But I'm telling you something that God is saying for your life to help you out. And if you don't see me living it, don't listen to it. Look at your neighbor and say, if you ain't going to be real, just get still. And that's what we got a whole lot of unrealers moving around. We see it. God see it. And the devil too. Uh, let, me, let me finish. I ain't got but a few moments anyway. But I've been called a whole lot of stuff, y'all. And it used to bother me. Even now in the kingdom of God, it used to bother me when people say things about me. But now it just lets me know I'm a son of God. See, you got to understand, number one, that you got to have heirship in the kingdom. 
Romans 8 and 17, he said, And if the children then heirs, heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified with him. Nobody in the body wants to suffer. Come on, sir. I said, I'm going to walk this out right here because this is good. No, nobody really wants to suffer. Y'all know what suffering is. Yes, suffering doesn't feel good. Right. Suffering's not popular because when people around you and they're looking at you going through your dimension, guess what they're going to say? You don't know God. But see, when you're walking with God and you're like Christ, you're going to go through Christian stuff. On, Look at somebody and say, Christian stuff. But we're going to be glorified with him. Galatians 3 and 29 said, and notice he keeps saying, and if. And if. You know what I believe he's saying? And if you're a son. And if. He puts that condition, that conjunction with, and if. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. See, one thing I love about God is when he promised you something, he's going to do just what he said. He promised you he'd bring you out. Look at you. He promised you he'd keep you. Look at you. He promised you he'd give you some peace. Because guess what? In the storm, I still got, oh, come on, peace of mind. Look at somebody and say, I got a peace of mind. I, I know where I'm headed. I know who's keeping. Because if you can take my peace, you can take my life. Somebody sitting at home right now, jacked up, don't know which way to go, don't know where to turn this way, that way, don't have no direction, they have no peace. No peace. My God, my God. No. I'm so glad to know that I'm an heir. I'm a millionaire. Through Abraham. Through the covenant, join heirs with Jesus. Look at somebody and say, I got Jesus, I got Abraham, and I got God. That means I'm a son. BB&T, American Bank, uh -huh. all those Wells Fargo's, yeah. they belong to us. Yeah. And see, if I had some believing people, you, you'd be on your feet right now because you realize, guess what? Just because you go there and they limit you to what you can get out don't mean you're limited to what you can have. Is the Lord and the fullness down everything on the earth that God owns? He owns me, He owns the house, He owns the car, He owns the soul. If you could have a Rockefeller walk, it ought to be like this. I'm not worried. Secondly, and I'm gonna take my seat. God needs true ownership. Amen. See, because how you tell whether God owns you is how you act for God. Amen. You see, because if I own you, and let me just get with marriage for a minute on that. I can probably get pretty bold, but first lady do have papers on me. They are legal binding. It did go through Raleigh. They sealed it and they stamped it and the preacher preached it to me. So, so, so ownership. That, that when anything happened, I could say, that's my wife. Because I own her. Not in the sense of owning you to cook the food, clean up, do what I tell you. No, that ain't the ownership. Ownership is because we're in covenant with each other and you know I love you and you love me, so guess what? I own you, you own me. I got stock invested in you. If the stock market don't go up, you should have went up. Ownership. First Peter 4 and 6 says, for, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they may be judged according to the man in the flesh, 
but live according to God in the spirit. You know what he's saying here now? We wrestle with this flesh. But when God has ownership, guess where you're going to be? In the spirit. That's right. You hear a whole lot of people cutting up and acting foolish? They're in the flesh. And the flesh will get you jacked up. I tell you what, I tell you what, I tell you what. Mess around with somebody that ain't fully got saved in the house of God. They'll take you outside, dust your sanctified self off, and bring you back in the church. They'll come up here and repent, but you'll be sore. They'll tell you, I, I didn't tell you I was all saved. I didn't tell you I was full of the Holy Ghost. I still had some world in me. I still had a, a form and blow in me. John 3 and 6 says, that is born of the flesh is the flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is the spirit. And he said, I marvel ye, ye must be, you got to be born again. He said, now, once you're born again, you, you tap into the spirit. That's right. And I'll say this as saints, y'all, we got to have the spirit. Because sometimes when people brush you wrong, if you don't have the spirit, you're going to jump in. It's either flesh or the spirit. And if they brush you wrong and you jump in the flesh, somebody in trouble. But if you stay in the spirit, you'll know how to say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, brother, sister. I love you in Jesus' name. Romans 8 and 9 says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be, that the word again, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, He's none of his. Amen, because once you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the spirit of restoration come in your life. You're changed. Changed. Look at somebody and say, changed. Amen. I'd have a problem with a Christian to get saved and tell me I'm still the same way. Because that would mean no ownership. And if you've ever seen a woman or a man out there with no ownership, then they'll tell you, well, I ain't got no wife or no girlfriend. I just do what I can. I'm, I'm a wild child. The wind blow, I go there. The wind shift, I'm in the middle of that. But when God owns you, you're controlled and governed by the Spirit of God. Amen. Thirdly, I take my seat. And it's almost 1 o'clock. Good time. True Lordship is led by the Spiritship. Romans 8 and 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for them who walk not after the flesh, but the Spirit. You know why a lot of people walk around in condemnation? Because they ain't in the Spirit. If I walked around concerned about the things I did, all the failures I had, and those things drug me, I couldn't walk in freedom. The freedom is that he died on the cross for us. The freedom is that he paid the price. Now, that doesn't give me a license to go around sinning just to say, well, the blood covers it. Because guess what? You're going to be held accountable for that. And I believe that we're going to be held accountable for what we say and what we do. He said every idle word, you're going to have to give an account. There's no condemnation. Romans 8 and 16 said, the spirit himself... It's self bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. How can you bear witness with somebody that, guess what, we got the same daddy? Because some of these people, the way they act, now, I ain't got the same daddy they got. Come on, we, I mean, we, we ain't got to look alike, but the way you acting, we ain't got the same daddy. Your daddy might have been a rolling stone. My daddy was the stone. <laughs> First John 4 and 6, as I take my seat. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. 
Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The sons of. It's going to be determined by two factors. The spirit of error or the spirit of truth. That's why I say, watch who speaks into your life. People can prophesy into your life, but you need to know what the spirit of error and the spirit of truth is. I can speak to you and tell you you're going to get a million dollars, but your life is in a million dollar mess. I need to speak to your situation first because if you had the million dollars, you wouldn't know what to do with it. But if your soul was fixed, you'd be better off having a fixed soul than a whole lot of money. I'm a son of. So the next time somebody call your name that doesn't seem like befitting to you, just say, I'm a son of. And they may ask you what does the last definition of the son of, you can say, I'll let you figure it out. Because sometimes people don't really understand you. They don't understand me. But I'm willing to go all the way. And that's why I said earlier, I believe God is doing some separation because guess what? He wants elevation. God will allow sometimes things to be taken out of our life so he can move us a little bit closer to him. Would y'all stand? I'm through. I'm not. I'm not. I'm a son of y'all. I'm a son of the righteous one. I'm a son of the holy one. And as he said earlier, we should be just like him. The same example. Don't let nobody keep telling you, well, I ain't perfect. But when you become a son of, you work in perfection to get that way. Because the only way you should leave this earth is perfected in God. Because you don't need to leave here with a whole lot of strings attached to you. Because those strings ain't going to take you into glory. He said, if you suffer with me, you shall then be glorified. And as he said in 1 John 3, he talked about, he said, we, we, we are not like we appear, but when we see him, we shall be as he is. Look at somebody say, he's making me closer to look like him. I want to look like Jesus, y'all. You know what? I want to resemble. Do I have any brothers and sisters that want to resemble God? 